Message for Chosen Ones About Galactic War Thank you for stopping on by to Knox Box, the box without limits, where we give you a 360 perspective and bring everything full circle. So yeah, before we get to the juicy stuff, there's an important clip that's going to tie everything else together and bring it full circle, right? So there's a guy in the 60s that people refer to as some type of black messiah. He's actually African to be precise. Um, so yeah, the interesting thing is he's not the first example of this in history. Before the official story of Christ came on the scene, there were 16 different amalgamations of a savior. So it appears that God or Christ himself, <laughs> I mean, people look at it as the same thing. But anyway, sent his consciousness down. But yeah, I'm going to um let y'all draw your own conclusions. The video will definitely speak for itself. I'm sure you will learn something from this guy that's about to play after the first clip. But before um we get to the main part, I'm going to show y'all this comment that kind of stuck out to me. It's quite interesting. So stay tuned. Leon Toko. This man was reportedly the black Jesus. And this is how the story goes. Listen. The black Jesus story was uh, probably one of the most shocking things I ever heard. Um, it came from my insider, uh, Jacob, I call him that in the book, who actually was working for the Rothschilds and still does. And um, Jacob Rothschild. also is a whistleblower who doesn't really do what they want, but continues to work for them because he feels like there's some very serious extraterrestrial threats to Earth and that what they're doing is very necessary to protect us. Yes, this is here. So the story goes that in the 1960s, there was a black man uh, in Africa who came in with abilities complementary to those of Jesus. And uh, he was performing miracles. He was starting to get people to listen to what he had to say. And the cabal tried to kill him. And, you know, they could shoot him in the head and his skull would just regenerate and the flesh would grow back and uh, he was fine. And, you know, so the crazy story that I heard, which, and, and remember, I was told at the time that if I disclosed this, that I would be uh, killed. And I ended up putting it in the book anyway. Um, the story was that this guy, uh, you know, they finally said, okay, we're going to bring you to the United Nations and share your message with the world. Let's get you on this flight. They, they bring him on this flight. And instead of bringing him to the United Nations, they shot him repeatedly and then actually had some kind of meat grinder device uh, and basically like a bandsaw, I guess, and sawed up his body into a whole bunch of pieces, put him in these very, uh, very like radioactive shielded uh, containers and then had all these fighter jets dock with the plane and fly his body parts to all corners of the world where then these containers um, uh, turned them into ash. And uh, they thought that maybe this would defeat him, like that his body somehow, the tissue was necessary. So if they destroyed all the tissue in all these places across the world, maybe they could defeat him. Well, he then regenerated in, in their offices and was fully fine, fully intact. But the sad part is that he said, you know, I, you guys so badly do not want me to be here that I am not going to be able to do any more. You're going to get what you want, but bear in mind that in the future, many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. Okay, this is the last part. I just wanted to share the identity of both Samian, who came to the scene during this period, 
Simeon Toko and Simeon Kambangu. They are the two witnesses spoken of in Revelation 11 and Zechariah 4. All throughout history, they appear and disappear. If you can receive it, Simeon Toko is Apostle John who ate the book in Revelation and became immortal and was to prophesy to many nations and people and kings, which he has been doing. And if you can receive it, Simeon Kambugu is Elijah who was to come and will come again. Elijah ate the book also, just as the Apostle John did and is immortal. I'm happy to say that both men are on the scene again. One has an ink horn, uh, 144,000 for an end time ministry. Both groups will enter immortality while in the flesh. They will be the first recipients of the go. Ooh, I just made a connection. Oh my God, this is deep, y'all. <laughs> I just made a connection to my friend. One of my, I, I know probably like six people that's been activated. Well, I can't, I'm not going to say activated. That tapped into their abilities and yeah, my friend has had visions of being immortal. Okay, so now for the grand finale. I just wanted to give some context because some people are still fully indoctrinated. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. In the hologram, you get these distortions. Outside the hologram, there's no distortions. You go into a hologram, time matrix, out of countless, well, you suddenly got distortions of God. That's how these holograms are working. Uh, but you know, so we, we understand that's a hologram. And I explained it in my Ascended Master video, in my, you know, dimensions and densities and video. Check it out, you guys. What's important is, when you understand this, you understand you. Macrocosm, microcosm. This whole thing is about, about all of this history that we had in Atlantis, that we had in ancient Egypt, what the pyramid is about, what the Sphinx is about, what our people are about, where we come from. So you just learn from the top bottom. You learn about who, what is God. You learn about the densities and the dimensions and matter form and consciousness. You learn about our chakras, mini chakras. You learn about also the distortions. You're learning up here at Crystal Savitar too about what is an Anunnaki, what is a dr drink, Drakon. Okay, this is a spiritual war. It's also an ancient war. It's a war, and it goes back to Atlantis. It's from Atlanteans uh, doing this. It's from them still reaching us from Atlantean days. Remember, that's just another time vector. This Atlantis is happening now, as we are happening now. Our past, but also our future is happening now. Your, your multi-dimensional awareness, that means your multi-time vector awareness. You're aware of the future, you're aware of the past, now. It streams to you now, Indigo, Blu-ray, Starseed. I love you, Holy Ones. Like some of you star seeds, we've come to the planet. We've gone through literally a soul contract. It's called a birthing contract, a soul birthing contract. You choose and agree with the higher aspects of the parents. Arrange to make this, they're gonna be your parents, man. <laughs> Anyways, you got permission from a soul level. That's why it's called soul contract. Not because your soul is on the line, buddy, no. Because it's from the soul level. Soul is a consciousness, not something that you indwell or indwells you. So, soul consciousness right here fourth dimension fifth dimension sixth dimension above this consciousness you have the higher over souls above this the planet is full of billions of earth seeds and then there's a small tiny population of holy grail indigo children on the planet team indigo baby there's a team of you on the planet a small tiny and there's a small tiny illuminati dark avatar races here a giant population of clueless Earthseeds and some Holy Grails and some Reptilians and Anunnakis. Of course, there is legions of them waiting at the gates. As in Stargates. As in being able to come in instantaneously. As in, no, you're not traveling like Star Trek shows you. You're porting, gating instantly somewhere. What are you traveling at light speed for? Damn, that's primitive. And understand that you guys are multidimensional beings. You are part of what's called the Holy Grail, indigo children coming out of the blue flame, the gold flame, the violet flame. Extraterrestrial races, because it's outside the terrestrial earth. So it's outer, extraterrestrial. So when we talk about a meta terrestrial, it goes way above just being outside your earth. 
The blue flame Ilohai is a meta terrestrial. These are solar rishi. Think of a sun, a colored sun. The blue flame Emerald Order Ilohai is 13th dimension. It's called the blue flame turquoise. And it's the same thing with the gold order. It's actually pale yellow. And the violet flame is actually pale magenta. So these three suns, these three solar rishi, these three founder races are creators of all life. Out of the blue flame came the cat people, came the lions, the lyrans. There has been influence here, okay? Um, and there's been wars in different seedings of humans. There's been, uh, uh, they're always trying to get into so our societies, get into our religions, yes, change them, yeah, tweak them, edit them. ETs, we're not talking about Illuminati, but they were there too. They are the puppets of the ETs. They're the human mixed puppets. They're actually not human. You, you know, you realize what they are. They're uh, actually what you call from the tribe. They are what you call, they are the Leviathan force and they're not all human. They're part human, a mutated version of human. Part of their DNA, human DNA was added to their pattern to create this being. And realize we're talking about a Neanderthal. Um, and after the Neanderthal, the, what the Guardians did, the Guardians mixed the, some positive DNA um, in this a genetic experiment with this Neanderthal. And this is this is a mutated hu um, Anunnaki human. This is what these beings are: the Leviathan Force, the Illuminati. They are this uh, literal uh, mutated human mixed with, you know, they're from this. This Anunnaki's are from. Uh, Nibiru, which is in our system by being its orbits being controlled, affected. These beings have this technology. Um, they're more advanced than you are. So this is why there's intervention. This is why there's indigos coming in. Some of you are indigo and you're activating these superpowers and becoming these guardians. You are guardians. But what's going on up there? <laughs> you see each dimension of evol spiritual evolution. Wow, the beings up there are like your concepts of these beings, just a few levels above you, you're calling gods. So those beings who are beyond these gods of yours in the second density, they're in third density. They don't have bodies. Okay? They're they're etheric. They're they're like crystal beings. And then you move on to uh, hydroplasm. <laughs> the hydroplasm. Can you imagine yourself? This is what these beings are. That Chris, this is what you are. That's what human is at the highest level. So you can understand why a hydroplasmic being is angelic. You are you are a, a truly an angelic being when you are at your 12th dimensional hydroplasmic form. That is what you call Christ consciousness. Imagine a liquid light being in front of you with these uh, giant wings, many wings. And it's made of liquid. It's all made of this liquid uh chrome liquid liquid light i uh, achieve much shiva this is what I, um, is extremely powerful to remember that you are hydroplasm and that it's that color of mercury and it's liquid and in hydro water plasm this form is who you are and when you bring this realization this vibration this color waveform into your ah yeah, but yeah it is true spiritual alchemy and so we talk about spirits and magic um it is part of magi magi king magi holy grail so holy grail is the type of indigo child there's type threes type twos and the masters are type ones so there are beings like christ who are super indigo child who actually brought in a large it was a real person we're not speaking from christian or you know we're speaking from spirituality like cosmic and there's a difference in religion and spiritual systems spiritual systems believe in talk about a cosmic god or as being consciousness you know god being consciousness we and us being consciousness all these ets um and multi-dimensionals are consciousness we're all member source god had in different levels of oneself law of one unity which you also call christ consciousness which is reference to 12 strand activation 12 strand with the technology we see these orbs and someone who's in 3d and below are going to say it's dust particles and can't see beyond astral the archetype or the celestial angelic okay they don't see those levels 
That's nonsense. That, you, that that's trying to say what? No, no, it doesn't. That what? So I show them coming through the freaking floor, and you'll still get someone say, "Oh, there's a stream of air in your room." It's like a metamorphosis, a leap in consciousness. Yes. But also, density too, honey, or you could say holographic universe too, that is uh, uh, more than just carbon, yeah. <laughs> it's a spiritual being, uh, maybe you could say, or just a, a being in higher vibrations of reality. That's how we uh, describe these other worlds. You know, they're in, in the hologram. This is a hologram, holy ones. See? Feel? No? In the hologram, you have holographics. We call density universes. Okay, because it's a density, so right there, sweetheart, you realize that it's a, it has to do with matter form. We're, we're in the particle universe, yes. Okay, but we also talk about the interparticle. Yes. If you are here, that means you are there. In the parallel, baby, you have a doppelganger. Remember, we're speaking from a consciousness perspective, yes like uh, the Lumerians. How many of you know about Lumerians? Yeah. They were actually like a matriarch. Their spiritual orders are more feminine in that way, like instead of a patriarch. So of course the patriarch was attacking the matriarch and um, then they destroyed the Lumeria. But of course there's some that survived and went to inner earth. Um, you're going to have survivors by either um, UFO uh, evacuations. They're going to evacuate their guardian races. Their And these are Holy Grail line races, like tribes, and people, nations. And you understand it's part of this beautiful uh, part of who you are. Uh, hello, booyah, your conscious awakening. Awakening, holy ones. It's the spiritual awakenment. You're opening this. That's what spiritual awakenment is. It's opening of chakras. That knowledge, okay, that energy, it's a form of energy to speak. They used to call it scalar speak because it sounds. The Sphinx was originally the face of a lion, and it was a lion because the Anunnaki, well, that's decided to stay with council and who wanted help from council, got help from a race called the Leonines. And they literally look like cat people, and they are originally uh, etheric beings from Density 3, that's high level compared to us, and, well, uh, they intervened and they helped. And, well, the Anunnaki that wanted help to evolve. Because of these ETs visiting and interacting with us, you know, during these periods, and being ETs themselves, ourselves, well, the stargates are, well, very special for that. You don't have to go the long way through a system. You can zap right in, you know, and just infiltrate very quickly. <laughs> That's what some of these beings have done. Whole systems have been lost, and we currently exist in, well, this low density level one on Earth, but the sphere of the stargates are very special because they, they can connect you right through to density universe two Tara, and also uh, density universe three Gaia, and even all the way up, you know, to density five, but density three and Gaia, it, like in, in the center of the, of the planet called Gaia, there is like this, uh, um, like the other video, it's a, a connection through the stargates, or, you know, and, and to this one connects to a planet called Mintaka in the Ryan star system. So you've heard of the system, you know what kind of races also come out of the system, so... It was about 48,500 years ago, the Syrian Council instructed their positive Anunnaki members to make a direct show of power in Egypt and Atlantis. You know, because all that problem and drama developing and anti, you know, human sentiment you know, and so the Anunnaki of the Syrian Council, they visited these civilizations in mass, okay? Like, reasserting uh, the influence of, like, the uh, Law of One, okay? And driving many of these negative Templar Anu out of Egypt, you know, back to Atlantis. So this is what we're up against. This is what the spiritual war is. Positive Love Light Law of One, negative Dark, you know, against Law of One. So where, this is where they would, you know, pose less threat to the Ark of the Covenant. And in Egypt, well, in several other locations on the globe, the portals of the inner earth were fortified as the Syrian Council Anunnaki, the positive ones, uh, built bases of like operation on earth's surface. You know, we're trying to show that straw of uh, strength. So directly over the portal regions. So the pyramid structure was like a trademark of this Anunnaki architecture and scientific achievement. Um, and so like uh, several uh, like 
small pyramid structures, they were constructed above, you know, uh, portal passage areas throughout Egypt. So this is kind of like, oh, there's a pyramid. I wonder if there's a portal nearby. Interesting. Now, the greatest of these operational bases, it was constructed over the main Egyptian um, portal opening to the inner earth. That's where that's located, through which the Ark of the Covenant portal, it could be accessed. And so now there's all kinds of interesting um, secretive things happening in that land of the Nile. Huh? So it was like... Uh, at the same time, this other massive structure was constructed over uh, the nearby Ark of the Covenant portal. So it was like the first monument, and it was to be created, with, it was the original Sphinx. So there's so many questions about this. There's so many, like, how old is it, or well, who created it, what's that really look like? Well, we're telling you. And the first monument, and, and it was like built directly over the entrance to the main inner earth portal. Um, what's under the, there? That's what's under there. That's what's, you know, everybody's looking for all these records and well things like that but the big thing about the sphinx is it's an actual marker and well it's kind of big and intimidating so it's also the protector of the inner earth portals you know the structure itself you know the main portals that go down from this area you know down into the frequency modulation zone that takes you to the inner earth territories and um from the main ones that the well the Rama races keep coming up from them or invading from those areas. So, because they're not just, well, a lot of people think the inner earth is all enlightened and it's all positive, but it's not all positive. <laughs> so you can, like I told you, you can have evil all the way up to levels, holy ones, all the way up to 11.5 dimension. So now it's like, uh, we, since that was happening, invasions were happening through this seals and, I mean, portals, they had to put seals on those portals, on those stargates. The seals are blocking those beings from doing it now. Now there's secret, uh, like security seals, right, on the portals to the light beings, you know, the light codes. And so, you know, these were, you know, meant to be fortification stations of uh, the Sphinx and the Pyramid. So now the Sphinx was originally the face of a lion. The, the Ceres Lamarians create, created themselves the priesthood of Mu, an egalitarian spiritual collective with like a actual strong matriarchal slant. You know, women only, you baby, you know, so who was practices centered around the teachings of the law, sacred law of one or unity consciousness. So you, you understand the Lemurians were strong in their spiritual heritage, and the priesthood of Mu exists to this day and is a primary motivating force within certain like Tarn communities. Just as a recap, we have the Lan the Lanians on the large continent of Eden, and now the Lem Lemurians in, in the small continent of Mu, okay, uh, with tensions rising between the two continents. And throughout the positive evolution of the Mu of Mu, you know, it was a much a very beautiful culture, and you know, and they're evolving themselves and. But the digression continued with the Elanian race. And so there was an anti-Lumarian sentiment that ran high with this uh, power-hungry, you know, Elanian elite. The Elanians employed, like, subterranean, like the subterranean grid technologies in hopes of bringing the, well, the now bountiful continent of Mu under Elanian domain. You know, like I mentioned before, the, Lum the Lumarians and 